You might have noticed in the past month, I've been doing a lot of tutorials on a bunch of different programs that seemingly do the exact same thing. There are so many tools out there for automating OBS and creating channel point rewards. And so a lot of you have been asking me, what the f is the difference? StreamerBot, Sammy, Atom, they all let you control OBS with channel points. They all act as a sort of chatbot replacement for something like Nightbot. They all let you make these huge multi actions, kind of like a stream deck. And they even all have their own stream deck plugin so you can get more functionality out of your stream deck. So why would you choose one over the other? What are the differences and which one should you be adding to your setup? Whichever one you want. That's that's the TLDR of this video. So like if you're interested then have fun for the next 20 minutes This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for all sorts of skills from programming to literally cooking. Most of you probably know Skillshare for their classes on video editing and content creation, but they actually have way more than that. One of my goals this year is to learn web development so I can make some widgets both for my own stream and to give to you guys. Actually, a couple nights ago, I had like this huge panic attack in my stream because I was trying to do CSS animations and I like literally have no idea what I'm doing. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm legit having a panic attack. I just have to leave. I think I'm done. I... Well, I found a class on CSS Animation Fundamentals by David Seeley. And I know it's not much, but using that class, I was able to make a really simple countdown animation, all within CSS, which is amazing because... Seriously, go back and watch my stream. It was a complete disaster. If you want to try out Skillshare, you can use the link down below in the first 1,000 of you will get a free one month trial of their premium membership. Okay, so today we're going to be comparing StreamerBot, Sammy, and Atom. These are three different tools that you can use to supercharge OBS. And if after watching this video, you're interested in setting any of these tools up, I've done a beginner style tutorial of every single one of them. So you can check him out over here. But today I'm just going to be comparing each of their features, what I think about their UI and which is is the most easy to use and just what I think about each tool overall. So let's start with functionality. Which of these tools is the most feature rich? And that without a doubt goes to StreamerBot. Because on top of all the basic stuff that every single one of these tools can do, like changing scenes in OBS and toggling sources on and off, it has things like voice controls. So you can control OBS using just your voice. Switch to gaming. Switch to webcam. And it's not just OBS, you can control even your lighting using just your voice. Turn off lights. Turn on lights. And if you want to be crazy, you can even combine different effects like this. Meltdown. On top of the basic integrations that you would expect like Twitch and YouTube, it supports way more platforms. Things like Donor Drive for charities, Pulsoid for heart rate monitors, Lumia Stream for your lighting, Voice Mod for voice effects, and yes, even Patreon. Did you guys know I have Patreon? <laughs> and while each of these tools supports Twitch, StreamerBot's integration with Twitch is very robust because it doesn't just support channel points, bits, and subs that you'd normally expect. It even supports things like polls. So you can set up a command so that every time you create a poll on Twitch, it automatically posts that question to Twitch chat so everybody knows what the question is. Or if you're really fancy, you can even program a widget so that when you create the poll, it shows an animated overlay on your stream with live results as people are voting in the poll. Does it sound familiar? Cause that's a widget that I set up on Patreon. Did I tell you guys that I have that? And as Twitch adds new features like the most recent shield mode, StreamerBot seems very responsive to adding those features into the program. So for example, I've set up my StreamerBot so that whenever I enable shield mode, it automatically triggers the lights behind me to turn white and also shows some text on screen. So that way my viewers don't get confused as to why the stream is in sub only mode and nobody can talk anymore. But the best feature of StreamerBot, and this is what I believe to be the ace up its sleeve, is the ability to write your own C Sharp code directly within the program. So if there's a particular feature that StreamerBot doesn't have, a programmer can just come along and just literally program that 
within StreamerBot. And even if you've never touched code in your entire life, it still benefits you because StreamerBot has the ability to export and easily share your code with other people. Sammy is not that far behind StreamerBot in terms of functionality. They're both very feature rich. Yeah, you're not gonna get things like voice control and Patreon support built right in, but the Sammy community is very active and they've even written their own extension that if you wanna have voice controls inside Sammy, you can just add that in later. And yeah, it doesn't have nearly as many integrations as StreamerBot, but the integrations that Sammy does have even go a little bit deeper than StreamerBot. For example, both Sammy and StreamerBot can control OBS. Obviously, that's why you'd be using one of these programs. But in Sammy, not only can you toggle a filter on and off, you can set up a command to literally change the settings within a filter. And instead of simply just changing scenes in OBS, how about creating a brand new scene from scratch using a simple command? The Twitch integration is even a little bit deeper, like, you want to trigger a command using channel point rewards? How about creating a brand new channel point reward from a command? These are features that you technically can do in StreamerBot, but then you'd have to delve into the world of writing custom code, and most of you guys probably don't know how to write code. One of the features I really love about Sammy is inside of your big multi-action, you can add a command that will allow you to type into a box, and then when you press enter, you can use the text that you typed in to do something else with within the multi-action. For example, you can set up a button on your stream deck that will change the title of your Twitch stream, but rather than just changing the title of your Twitch stream to a predetermined title, it will pull up a text box that you can just type into, and then when you press enter, whatever you typed in will be the new title of your stream. This is a really useful feature for creating Twitch polls on the fly, or channel point predictions, or even changing a text label within OBS. And just like StreamerBot, Sammy also gives you the ability to export commands that you've made and then share that with other people. But it's even a little bit better than StreamerBot because not only can you export the multi-action command itself, you can even export the triggers that go along with it. One of the things that really bothers me about StreamerBot is if I have a multi-action command that I intend to be triggered by a sub alert and I export that and give that to a friend, when they import that command, they only have the multi-action command and then they would have to manually go in themselves and connect that command to the sub alert action. And that's really annoying. With Sammy, if I did the same thing and exported my command and gave that to a friend, they don't have to set up anything else. That command will be triggered every time they get a sub on their stream. Now, Atom, on the other hand, has by far the least features, which is kind of disappointing because out of all the programs in this list, Atom is the only one that charges a $5 fee every month. There's no YouTube support yet, there's no voice controls, even basic features like hotkey support are still coming. But the biggest missing feature is a basic queuing system. So if you have a bunch of channel point rewards like sound effects, setup and you don't want the sound effects to overlap each other, it doesn't have that queuing system in place to prevent that from happening. Now, a queuing system is on their roadmap, so it is coming, but for right now, I can only judge it based on what it can do now, and it just doesn't have that. However, it does have native Elgato key light support, so if you have key lights, you can control them within ATEM, and you don't even have to set anything up. They just appear in the program. It's also the only option on this list that supports both Mac and Linux, so if you're on a Mac, then I guess this is your only option. And it's the only option in this list that natively supports Amazon's text the speech within the program itself and it actually works really fast and is super simple to set up mommy stop 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 but yeah, so it's looking really bad for ATIM. I just spent a long time talking about all of the huge list of features for StreamerBot and Sammy, but when it comes to the UI, ATIM is by far the cleanest, most modern, and easy to use UI out of all these three, and it's not even close. The UI for ATIM, while it isn't perfect, I do have some complaints, it is the closest to getting it right that you're ever gonna get on any of these stream automation tools. And that might be because it 
doesn't have a lot of features and that's why the UI is so simple and easy to use. But the rules tab where you set up all your different multi actions is by far the best user experience that you're gonna get. I love these buttons up here that allow you to switch between a standard multi action to a toggle switch or a sequence so you can cycle between a sequence of different actions. I love that it has an actual test button so that when you're creating a multi action event, you can just click a button to test to see what your action does. It's got a dedicated tab just for global variables. So if you've set up something like a death counter within Atom, you can see the actual value of that death counter and change the value within that tab. They also just introduced a simple UI mode, which strips away all of the more advanced features and shows you just the necessary things that the vast majority of people would use. I do think the UI uses way too many collapsible menus. I really wish that they just started using more floating windows kind of like every single operating system for the past 30 years. But the way that they've presented their multi actions and their triggers and bundled them together into a simple thing that they call a rule is very intuitive, easy to use, and I think is the way that a UI should be designed. Sammy has a pretty decent UI as well, but the whole program is designed using the Game Maker engine, and so everything kind of looks like an old school JRPG, so if you don't like that style, I guess it's not gonna be for you. The commands window is pretty easy to use. It's a little bit cluttered, but it's the only option that allows you to multi-select your actions and then do drag and drop to reorder them. But it still has that this was designed by a programmer type of user experience. There's a lot of issues with like text scaling and a lot of windows where it thinks I was double clicking when I wasn't, which is fucking annoying. There you go. I really wish it would stop double clicking in this. Speaking of designed by programmers, StreamerBot straight up looks like a Windows 95 program. It's very intimidating for new users. It's plain, there's no dark mode, and it kind of gives off this vibe that you need to know programming to use it even though you don't. And so a lot of people don't even wanna give it a shot because of that. But who cares? It's all about functionality, right? Who cares if it doesn't have a modern looking UI? I'm the biggest streamer bot fanboy that you'll ever find, but it's not just that the UI is ugly to look at. It's so cluttered that it straight up hinders its functionality. Like if you've been watching this video and you've said to yourself at least one time, but StreamerBot can do this, but StreamerBot can do that. That thing that you said StreamerBot can do, it can do that. Sure, StreamerBot can do everything, but the fundamental structure of the whole UI is just, it needs to be done from the ground up. That's how bad I think it is. Check it out compared to Atom. This is Atom's rules page. This is where you set up all your different multi actions. In Atom, they call them rules, but essentially a rule is just a thing that you can do. And then separate to the things that you can do are the triggers. And a trigger is just a way that you can trigger that thing that you can do. And so naturally you'd think those two things should be bundled together, but that's not how StreamerBot works. See in StreamerBot, you have your actions tab and your actions tab would be the equivalent of the rules section in Atom where it lists all the different things that you can do. But the triggers, the triggers are spread out all, all the way throughout the program, everywhere. It's just, you gotta go hunting for it. Like you would think that if I create an action to change scenes and I wanna add a trigger to trigger that with a channel point reward, I should just be able to right click that action and then add the trigger there, right? Nope, you gotta navigate away from that actions tab into the platforms tab, into the Twitch tab, into the channel points tab, add your channel point there and then link the action to that channel point. But it gets worse because let's just say you have two actions that you want to be triggered by the same channel point reward. You can't do that because the channel point reward, you can only select one action. And this is where the technically you can do it comes in because technically you can create a separate action and then put a nested action in there and run that nested action by your channel point reward. But why should you have to do that? And while we're on this Twitch tab, look how many options there are here. All of these options are different triggers for channel point rewards and they're all presented to you whether you're going to use them or not. And that's what makes StreamerBot very scary to look at. Another example of this is the way that StreamerBot handles if else statements. So an if else statement is kind 
kind of like, if X thing is true, run this action. If Y is true, run this action. And with both Sammy and Atom, you can accomplish all of that within one multi-action. But with StreamerBot, if you want to do one if-else statement, you need a minimum of three actions to accomplish that. And that is just wild to me that that is the way that they've set the UI out. So in terms of functionality, I would rank it as StreamerBot at the top, Sammy a little bit below that, and then Atom way down the bottom. But in terms of UI, it's like the exact opposite. So Atom is way at the top, Sammy's a little bit below that, and then StreamerBot just fundamentally needs to be redone from the ground up. The last thing I'll touch on are the Stream Deck plugins. Now, all of these tools have their own Stream Deck plugin. So if you make a really complicated multi-action, you can just trigger that from your Stream Deck. I'm not gonna go too in depth with this, but StreamerBot and Atom both work almost exactly the same. It just lists all your different multi-actions and then you select the multi-action that you want to run. I'm gonna give the nods to Atom here because Atom makes it really easy to make a toggle switch. So if you wanna have one button on your Stream Deck that turns on and off an effect, then it's way easier to do inside of Atom. Sammy's Stream Deck plugin is the most half-baked because Number one, it's still called the Leorn Board 2 plugin for Stream Deck. And then also there's no cool dropdown box where you select the command that you wanna run. You have to go hunting inside of the program, find your button ID, and then type that ID into the plugin. But if you don't have a Stream Deck, StreamerBot and Sammy both have their own alternate solutions that work kind of like a Stream Deck. Sammy's one is an Android app that turns your phone into sort of like a Stream Deck. Whereas StreamerBot's Stream Deck pages are all web-based, so you you can set up a URL that contains your stream deck and then share that with your mods. So your mods can remote control your stream halfway across the planet. But guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. This has been a super long video. Never ever make me do that ever again. In summary, this is what I'd recommend. If you're a new streamer and you just want something that's easy to use and you just wanna set up some basic OBS multi-actions, go with Atom. Now Atom does cost $5 a month, but if you use the code NUTTY, you can get 20% off. It's not an affiliate link. It literally is just there to save you money. But if you want more advanced features and you want to do crazy things with your stream, you're already using StreamerBot and you just watched this video to validate your own feelings and opinions about it, okay? You, you didn't learn anything new from this video. But for most people that are just looking for a great all-rounder with a decent UI, a pretty robust set of features, and is totally free, I think you have to go with Sammy, which is pretty surprising coming from me because I've been pushing StreamerBot for like the longest time, but Sammy is a really good option. But guys, let me know in the comments down below which of these stream automation tools you use for your stream. Did I convince you to use a different tool? And before anyone asks, yes, I'm aware of FireBot, MixItUp, TouchPortal, BikuBot, Cruise Control. Did I leave anyone out? I'm not gonna do a video every time one of these automation tools comes out because let's be real, they all do the same shit. Just pick whatever one works best for you. Hey, before you guys go, I am on Patreon now and I've been releasing my own custom made widgets there. So if you've been watching my Twitch stream, which I'm on Twitch too, you can follow me there as well. And there's a particular widget that you like, check out the Patreon, it might be released there. All the proceeds will be going towards my bank account. I'll see you guys next week.